Hi guys, this is Ratchet Throw, and we are playing Criminal Case, Mr. of the Past, Case 21, Blue Blazes. Let's unlock Chapter 2. Andrea, we found the distillery where the victim made his moonshine. I went through the truck registration archives and found that the delivery truck at the crime scene was linked to an abandoned warehouse. So we sent some men to check that the distillery was in the basement of the warehouse. The victim's distillery? But then we must go investigate at once. Okay. Yeah, moonshine. Thanks. I'm not gonna trick it. Not at the job. Alright, so let's investigate the distillery. What do we have here? Yeah, there, look at all this alcohol. I haven't seen so much in one place as the prohibition began. You don't fancy it, Nip? No. No, of course, you're absolutely right. We haven't murdered the soul. Since this story was operated by the victim, you are about to have found some clues, Katria. You're right, that crate has something written on it. Your dusty kid could help see what it is. And you'll want to rummage through that leather satchel, of course. Plus, that tour paper could tell us how to report it if you piece it back together. We are in the home turf of the Irish gang at the heart of its illegal alcohol operations. This is a big fight, Katia. Let's get cracking. And I still wonder when are we going to meet uh, Philly's sister, Fiona. Alright, let's uh, first do the bag. Is that you? No, I don't think it's him. That bag had everything from knives to fake beards. If it belonged to our radio, it certainly led an exciting life. More reportedly, I found this photo in that bag. It wasn't taken here, and I don't recognize this man. We should probably run a comparison against our records back on the airship and find out who this man is. Okay. All right, now the store paper. All right, what were you up to? Are you some kind of a robber and you have this uh, threats like this? <laughs> You're about to go up in flames, Davy Boyo. <laughs> All right, so must be said by the killer. And very wise to use this <laughs> letters from a newspaper. The top paper was a message. You are about to go up in flames, David Boyo. You're right, Katia. Given how the waiting died, this threat was clearly sent to him by the killer. Surely spotted, Katia. The letters used to spell the threat seem to have been told from a newspaper. Here we can surely trace their origin. Yeah, from a specific newspaper is going to be. Alright, 12 hours. Now it's crate of moonshine. Let's see what is written here. Gotcha now! The thing on the text of the crate says Fiona Flanagan. We hit the jackpot. I knew this story would lead us to her. And we finally meet. And I was wondering when you'd show up. And why would a Concordia fire squad need to be led to me? Fiona Flanagan, how did you just walk in here? Speak of the viper and she shall appear. Perhaps you should tell me what you're doing here. The Catherine will be asking all the questions, Miss Flanagan. We finally meet. Let's see how much bitch you are. Since your brother is an asshole. Alright, now this photo. Let's see who's this guy.
You are that's by Mauro Massetti. The man in the photo you find is a certain Mauro Massetti. He's Italian. But will we find a photo of an Italian man in an illegal Irish distillery? We better go ask him. Okay, another Italian suspect. What's going on? Alright, now let's go talk to Fiona. Viper. Miss Fargo, we know David Byron made moonshine for you and the gang out of this distillery and today we found him burnt to death. Burnt, you say? Gotta match, I need a little nicotine. It's so bad about David, but I hope you aren't accusing me of killing him. Why would I do that? Well, he was working for you and your brother, and who knows how you two treat your underlings. If, and do I mean if, they... If David Byron worked for me, I'd be making mad amounts of money. Killing him would be bad for business. Three prohibition, a little hooch goes a long way. A person can turn quite a profit, but only if they have the product. Play us and all you want is fun. Again, if the delicate finds that you profited from his murder will be the ones having the last laugh. <laughs> last laugh. Okay. Just it. Oh, just imitating the laugh. Alright. Now, let's go talk to another Italian suspect. Mr. Bassetti, can you explain why I'll take the a photo of you in an Irish distillery? No idea, I don't know any Irish ragazzi. Maybe they had a photo because they heard of my bakery. I make the best cannoli in Concordia. You better believe it. And you have no connection to a man named David, By David Byrne? No, but I just bet on a horse at the train named Byrne in hell. If I win, I buy another woman. This is hardly a time for jokes, Mr. Massetti. The man we are talking about was murdered earlier today. Murdered? Marona Mia, that's terrible to hear, even though I never knew the guy. You really think so? I think you're lying. Well, it remains to be seen if he knew you, Mr. Massetti. We'll contact you if we have any further questions. Well, maybe he's lying. That's what you all do. Alright, we gotta wait for this threat to finish. Sit a bit. And we are back. Let's check out this threat. Atria the kills threat to the video speaks volumes, or rather installments. Installments? Eevee are threatening installments? What are you talking about? Well, the letters used to write the threat are all in a typeface used exclusively by the serial fiction publication, Pistols and Petticoats. Oh yes, that's a new story magazine. Every week there's a new installment of an ongoing story. Some of them are rather saucy. Well, how can you be so sure that the letters in the thread are from that publication, Evie? Um, well, because I write stories for them. Evie, you write for pistols and petticoats? I never would have thought. Which romantic saga is yours? That's not important. What is important is that the killer used the letters from it to write a threat to the victim. So, killer is pistols and petticoats? Not the devil. But speaking of petticoats, Katia, yeah, we should probably return to the scene's first shot. There may be more clues. What, you were writing in that magazine? <laughs> now I wonder what she was writing about. Alright. Let's uh, go back to this shop. Or was I clicking? <laughs> I needed the notebook. There. Hey, gun. Oh, we need it. But we know David wasn't killed with a gunshot. God damn, is that a gun casually lying around the sister's shop? So it seems to be engraved on the barrel. Maybe you can count what it says. I found a notebook with S. PQR on the front. Isn't that the motto for the city of Rowe? Let's try to find it here. Let's see what's inside. It's probably Gilettas. Well, the writing inside is code. Perhaps if you decide we could discover the notebook's owner. Ah, it's probably going to be Gilletta. Alright, first let's do the symbols.
Alright. Those numbers are recorded and hopefully will be more to Eevee than they do to be. Let's get it to him. Let's get it to her on the double. David, what's wrong with me? Because I'm reading this too fast. And that's when I get lost. Alright, 12 hours. Now let's, uh... Let's see what's this got about. What, just a code? I thought I was gonna use the dusting kit. Well, well, well. Alright. Molly dear. Goodness me, why is Molly Byron's name engraved on a gun? Perhaps Mrs. Spider wasn't as removed from her husband's scam business as we thought. We better go talk to her. Okay. What did you need that gun for? Mrs. Byron, can you explain why I take it? They found a gun with your name on it. The gun was a gift from my Davy. Why to be sure I could take care of myself? Do you mean that he wanted you to take care of yourself in the gang? No, I never wanted any of that gang life, and not for Davy either. The day we met, he swore he'd never put me in harm's way. It was a solemn vow. Instead, he got us caught up with the riffraff. Give me that gun was the last straw. Davy didn't understand. I never asked for the sight, and he doomed me to it. Well, Miss Spider, we hope that you did not kill your husband to save yourself. Alright. Alright, we gotta wait till this code message to finish. See you in a bit. And we are back. Let's get check out this coded message. And three other numbers to the cipher from that fancy Italian note would took a little while to suss up when I managed. They correspond to coordinates and times. They do. What sort of co coordinates and times? The times were often in the dead of night, and when I checked the coordinates, I found they led to places where you could buy bottled alcohol. This appears to be a delivery schedule. Probably to get moonshine to the speaker seats. So we have the times and coordinates for the delivery of moonshine, which is an Irish interest, but the code was written in an Italian notebook. I thought it was strange too, so I checked for fingerprints on the notebook and they matched Giulietta Capecci. So Miss Capecci was sniffing around the Irish alcohol production, this definitely would have put her in our victim's path. I think you must interrogate Miss Capecci straight away. Alright, what were you doing? Miss Capacci, you said you were here for dress, but we know you were taking notes about moonshine deliveries made by the Irish. I sure know you'd find out, Tectia. After those parties hosted by Alice and Religion Fuse, I'd had my fill of polite society. It was time to return to my roots. I decided to prove myself to my dad by getting him information that even his best lieutenants couldn't get him. So you spied on the Irish and he led you to Dave Byron's distillery, is that right? I thought no one would suspect a harmless young woman, but he almost caught me Snoopy. He saw the light from the end of my cigarette. As he started to come over to me, I hid behind my copy of pistols and petticoats. Luckily, he walked on. I found that hard to believe, Miss Capecci. You put yourself in a very dangerous situation. Perhaps you made sure they would never tell a soul. Really? Natia, we are deep in Irish gang territory. We are slowly filling it with a dead gang member's murder to Saul. The third day, Byron was lit on fire after being tossed in his own moonshine. But who could have done this? We have two Italians throwing up on the wrong side of the town, and one of the Giulietta Capetti is actually spying on the Irish gang. If Vienna Flanagan is as nasty as they come and much smoother of a talker than her brother Matt up, but so far she has no real motive to kill her gang's own distiller. Oh, okay, dear, you're still here. I thought you were attending that emergency or whatever it is. Emergency? What emergency? Well, that Yuna Flanagan, of course, she's dismantling the gang's distillery. She's what? I guess we gotta catch her then. Catch me if you can, it's going to be. Alright, we gotta stop here, get to play chapter 3. So, thank for watching. Look, if you like this video, and I'll see you again. Goodbye! <laughs>